Greetings to everyone who's turned out for this Transgender Day of Remembrance. I had hoped to be in your midst tonight. I have to say the Vicar Cynthia Espeseth was on top of this early on and had it on my calendar, but an intervening election after that request has put me on the other side of the country. I'm so sorry I can't be with you, but I want you to know I am with you in spirit and you have my complete support. I'm also deeply grateful for the community of St. Hilda St. Patrick and their welcome to you this evening and every day. I remember well when transgender became more than just a word or a concept but a true human reality. I was a vicar in my first parish and a young woman that had been a member of that church came to me after many trying times before, once again distraught. She shut the door and said, I'm going to say something to you I've never said to any human in my life. She went on to say, after I say it, if you want me to leave this church, I will, and I promise never to bother you again. I told her without telling me anything that day would never come, the day when I'd ask her to leave. Whatever she had to say, I would not ask her to leave. She said to me, I'm a transgendered person. I've been a woman all my life, raised as one, biologically one, but not one in my heart and soul. We talked for several hours. She looked at me and said, what am I supposed to do now? And without thinking, I said, you should live this out, front and center, in and with the community, because if we're not good for that, we're not good for anything. And after some thought and reflection on her part, that is exactly what she very bravely agreed to do. So we put a group together to walk with her as she transitioned, and we encountered all the things we would encounter in a small southern town. I knew this group had to have not only supporters, but also some who were not so sure. And I decided to ask a woman I knew to be opposed to the idea, but also a woman of deep prayer. And for me, reluctantly, she agreed to be part of this group. After months of this group working together, it came time to rename this woman as a man and give him his new name. We all decided that had to be done before the congregation. I told this group it would be best if someone from their rank shared the journey and then introduced him. I was amazed that it was that woman I had asked, the one who reluctantly decided to join the group, who was adamant that she would be the one to tell the story and to do the introduction. And I can't tell you what a moving day that was in that church and for those people. It was no longer a word or a concept, but a human reality. In July, I was interviewed regarding transgender people in the ordained ministry because I have most joyously ordained transgender people. And I am quoted as saying, transgender people bring to ministry a deep understanding of what it is to live in a world that refuses to let you be who you are. You have so much to offer us all. I wanted to be present if even by the wonders of modern technology, to say clearly thank you for the authentic human reality you are. You are a testament and a witness to the God I believe in that calls us to just that and no less. And along with you, I remember those who have gone before, who were the victims of a world that does not understand, and with a great hope that working together and by being authentic, we can change that. Bless you all and thank you for the honor of inviting me to be part of this very sacred event.